The Forgotten Fraud The Jews have never lost the Sabbath. Many people assume Saturday is the biblical Sabbath because the Jews worship on that day. It is claimed the Jews have never lost the Sabbath, and this supposition is accepted as conclusive proof Saturday must therefore be the true Sabbath of the Bible. Truthfully, Jewish scholars deliberately changed the only calendar whereby Yahweh's Sabbath could alone be calculated accurately. The Council of Nicaea, circa spring-summer 325 AD, is significant in the history of Christianity as at that time heathenism invaded the church. The pure apostolic faith of the early Christians became diluted. The Council of Nicaea is also significant in the history of Judaism, as after the Council, intense persecution surrounded all wanting clear biblical timekeeping. At the Council of Nicaea, the last thread was snapped which connected Christianity with its parent stock. The festival of Easter had up till now been celebrated for the most part at the same time as the Jewish Passover, and indeed upon the days calculated and fixed by the Sanhedrin in Judea for its celebration. But in future, its observance was to be rendered altogether independent of the Jewish calendar. The Roman Emperor Constantine the Great assemble the council to further his personal political agenda. He wanted Christians to fully separate themselves from their spiritual heritage grounded in Judaism. Most Christians were commemorating the Savior's death on the Passover of the biblical lunisolar calendar. Constantine wanted to unite Christians and pagans by having all future celebrations shifted to Easter Sunday on the Julian solar calendar instead. He explained, It is on becoming beyond measure that on this the holiest of festivals, Easter, we should follow the customs of the Jews. Henceforward, let us have nothing in common with this odious people. Our Saviour has shown us another path. It would indeed be absurd if the Jews were able to boast that we are not in a position to celebrate the Passover without the aid of their rules. Calendar Calculations This declaration had far-reaching and catastrophic effects on the ancient method of timekeeping. Constantius, Constantine's son, went still further. Whereas Constantine had outlawed the use of the Jewish calendar for Christian observances, Constantius forbade the use of it by the Jews as well. Under the reign of Constantius, 337 to 362 AD, the persecutions of the Jews reached such a height that the computation of the calendar was forbidden under pain of severe punishment. Saturday is not the ancient Sabbath of creation, nor of Moses or of Yahushua. Under intense persecution, the Jews themselves modified their calculation of spiritual time. Patriarch Hillel II president of the Sanhedrin was himself responsible for a change that ultimately led to the acceptance of Saturday as the Sabbath. The miserable condition of Judea was the occasion of an act of self-renunciation on the part of the patriarch Hillel, which has not yet been thoroughly appreciated. The custom had prevailed up till now of keeping secret 
the computation of the new moon and the leap year, and of making known the times of the festivals to the communities in the neighboring lands by announcing them by messengers. During the persecutions under Constantius, this method had proved itself to be impracticable and useless. Whenever the Sanhedrin was prevented from fixing the date of the leap year, the Jewish communities in distant countries were left in utter doubt concerning the most important religious decisions. In order to put a stop to all difficulty and uncertainty, Hillel II introduced a final and fixed calendar. With his own hand, the Patriarch destroyed the last bond which united the communities dispersed throughout the Roman and Persian empires with the Patriarchate. Jewish scholars are well aware that Hillel's act was a complete change of calendar. Declaring the new month by observation of the new moon and the new year by the arrival of spring can only be done by the Sanhedrin. In the time of Hillel II, the Romans prohibited this practice. Hillel II was therefore forced to institute his fixed calendar, thus in effect giving the Sanhedrin's advance approval to the calendars of all future years. Jewish scholars are fully aware the calendar they now use is not the one established by Yahweh and confirmed by Moses at the Exodus. The Jews themselves establish in their own writings Saturday is not the true Bible Sabbath and no unequivocally Saturday is not and could never be the true Sabbath of Yahweh El Shaddai with those who speak the truth concerning this matter being aware of this since the change was made in the days of Hillel II. Rabbi Louis Finkelstein was a well-known, well-respected Jewish scholar. In a letter to Dr. Leroy Froome, dated February 20, 1939, Finkelstein readily admitted the Jewish calendar was fixed in the 4th century. Heinrich Gratz, in his voluminous six-volume work published by the Jewish Society of America, acknowledged even the computation of the calendar and trade in articles of religious use were forbidden in the 4th century. Today, Many people assume, because the papal Gregorian calendar has a continuous weekly cycle of seven days, the week in use is somehow a continuation of the Hebrew week of seven days. They conclude, therefore, Saturday must be the seventh-day Sabbath of Scripture. A proper understanding of the basic differences between the solar calendar format and the format of the Biblical lunisolar calendar would ensure such assumptions would not present themselves when dealing with the importance of the true Sabbath of the Creator Eloah. Jewish scholars know the ancient Sabbath of Scripture was not part of a continuous weekly cycle. Rather, months followed the phases of the moon, the monthly cycle reset with each new moon. Therefore, the seventh-day Sabbath was not part of a continuous weekly cycle as in the modern Saturday. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul. It is still correct today to use the Luni solar calendar to calculate Judeo-Christian annual religious festivals. Therefore, Passover and Day of Atonement drift from date to date on the 
continuous weekly cycle of the Gregorian calendar. Weekly Sabbaths, however, no longer have any connection to the phases of the moon. It is here most people trying to prove Saturday is the biblical Sabbath make a mistake. People assume because the Jews worship on Saturday, the biblical weekly cycle was ever continuous with but the annual festivals sharing a lunar connection. This is not an assumption shared by Jewish scholars. Jewish scholars are fully aware the ancient Sabbath could not be part of a continuous weekly cycle because it was linked to the phases of the moon. This startling fact is acknowledged by this quote from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. With the development of the importance of the Sabbath as a day of consecration and the emphasis laid upon the significant number seven, the week became more and more divorced from its lunar connection. It is probable the change from a Sabbath closely connected to the phases of the moon to a continuously cycling Saturday Sabbath occurred at the time Hillel II fixed the calendar. At that time, rules of postponement were introduced. Up until Hillel II, rules of postponement were unnecessary because annual festivals and the weekly Sabbaths were all observed on the same luny solar calendar. However, when the annual festivals were calculated by a luny solar calendar, while the seventh-day Sabbath was calculated by a different solar calendar, there were occasional conflicts. Thus, the need arose for new rules of postponement. The calendar used by the Israelites in the first century was the calendar of creation. At that time, the high priest, who was always a Sadducee, was in charge of the calendar. It was his responsibility to declare new moons and the intercalation of a thirteenth month as needed. Like Yahushua, the Sadducees also rejected the Pharisees' oral law of man-made traditions. They maintained the books of Moses were the only source of divine authority. Yahushua often spoke against the multitude of rules and traditions imposed by the Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. The sheer multitudes of man-made rules and traditions taught the common people the rulers were far from their creator and far from a loving interest in them. This caused their own spirituality to decrease. Thus Christ was sent to his people just at the right time. Ultimately, the Pharisees triumphed. The Sadducean class, who had been in charge of the biblical calendar, ceased to exist after the destruction of Jerusalem. With the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the Sadducees disappeared altogether, leaving the regulation of all Jewish affairs in the hands of the Pharisees. Henceforth, Jewish life was regulated by the Pharisees. A new chain of tradition supplanted the older priestly tradition, Phariseeism shaped the character of Judaism, and the life and thought of the Jew for all the future. Alone, and wholly in charge, the Pharisees remained to impose their rules and regulations on all. The oral traditions of the Pharisees recorded in the Talmud became Rabbinic Judaism. Phariseeism became Talmudism, but the spirit of the ancient Pharisee survives unaltered. When the Jew studies the Talmud, 
he is actually repeating the arguments used in the Palestinian academies. The spirit of the Pharisees' doctrine has remained quick and vital. Today, the calendar used by Jews is nothing more than a perversion of the original calendar. It has been corrupted by the man-made traditions of the Pharisees recorded in the Talmud. Talmudic tradition teaches if one loses track of when the Sabbath occurs, all one has to do is worship on every seventh day. One who has been traveling in a desert and does not know what day is Sabbath must count six days from the day on which he realizes that he has missed the Sabbath and observe the seventh. This is the rationale used to justify keeping Saturday as the seventh-day Sabbath. The argument believers should worship on Saturday because the Jews do is based on the erroneous assumption the Jews would never worship on anything but the true Sabbath. Statements from the Jews prove this assumption is wrong. They did indeed change the Sabbath when they changed the calendar by which the Sabbath was to be calculated. All who desire to honor their Maker by worshiping on His Sabbath will not look to the traditions of the Jews or the calendar of the Catholics. Rather, they will worship Him on the Holy Sabbath as calculated by the original lunisolar calendar established at creation. <laughs>